In this short video, we want to talk about the relational model. According to some estimates, it is a $26 billion industry. If we put aside the recent NoSQL databases, because it's something new, like more recent, uh, all other commercial databases are using relational model as their base. So the questions that we want to study here what is the relational model? Uh, uh, why is it important? What is significant about the relational model that makes it so dominant? And what can we do with this? How can we structure our data using the relational model? Okay, uh, so let's get to work. Okay, so the, what we are studying today is the relational model, and perhaps the first question is, what is the relational model? Okay, uh, here probably a better descriptive name is relational data model, even though we don't may not use this data model, I mean, the, the, the full uh, term, but that's what it means, basically. Uh, when we say relational model, we really refer to as a relational data model, okay? And the questions here are perhaps, uh, what is a data model? And maybe what's the relation, okay? Okay, so a data model is, a, it is, uh, let me, It is a way to describe the structure of our data. And uh, that is what we refer to as data model. Uh, to give you an example, suppose I have a name, age, phone, and I want to record this information. The question is, what should be the structure of this data? I'm not talking about the data itself. For example, I have these names, phones, ages. That's not the issue, the data itself. It is basically how I'm gonna structure it, basically. What should be the structure of the data, okay? And for the same reason, I want to emphasize this structure here, okay? So this is a data model. And the question, that we have, for example, when we want to record something like name, age, phone is, So how shall we structure our data? That's the question, okay? Okay, so uh, the next uh, issue is, or the next question is maybe, what is the relation? Because kind of relational data model, we are putting the two concepts together, okay? So what is a relation? Okay, so in its simplest form, uh, relations maybe def can be defined over two sets. So imagine we have these sets, and here I have, for example, make, and here I have model. Uh, some makes here I can list maybe uh, Toyota, Honda, Ford, and some models would be maybe okay. So a relation in this case is uh, defined over the Cartesian product of these two sets. Okay, so we have these two sets. Consider and. Again, these sets, for example, when I have make here, this is, think about this as all possible makes. The, this, this includes uh, all the makes that we had in the past and maybe all the makes that we have in future, 
Okay, so you can see that, for example, I, I won't have like even the complete set. I don't know the complete set, but it is basically that's what it includes. And model is again the same, the set of all models. Okay, a relation is defined over Cartesian product and it is a subset uh, of the Cartesian product. So in this particular case, uh, one relation could be something like this. So this is a relation. I add like another maybe row here. This is a still a relation. So these are relations and that is basically again, it is a subset over the Cartesian product. That's what the relation is, okay? In this particular case, uh, my relation is binary. It is a binary relation because it is defined over two sets. You can see that we can have n array relations as well. Okay. So when I have a relation defined over the Cartesian product of uh, n sets, that's going to be basically an n error relation. So, for example, uh, a relation that I define, for example, for name, age, phone, that's going to be basically a ternary relation. Okay, so it's defined over three sets. Okay, so even though uh, a relation is defined over sets, uh, we Sometimes you misuse the term. We also refer to a relation, a single relation as a, uh, as, sorry, a single set also as a relation. So we may refer to, for example, something like uh, this also as a relation. Okay. So that's a relation. So again, uh, we are talking about the relational model. And the issues are, so basically, what is a relational model? And we said that we talked about the data model. It's a way to describe the structure of our data. A relation is basically a Cartesian. It is a subset defined over the Cartesian product. Okay. So as you can see, we are putting these concepts together. So we are using basically relations to describe the structure of our data. That's what we are, we are doing. So now uh, something else that's happening here as well uh, and that is we also treat a relation as a table. Okay, So a relation is a mathematical concept. Table is something that well we use every day. Okay, So it is like I mean, it, it's not like a mathematical concept. But what we are trying to do is that we are trying to put both together. We are kind of looking at like a relation as a table and we are looking at the table as a relation. And that has like uh, interesting uh, implications. Okay. So that, that's what we do. And we also have constraints. Uh, so, for example, uh, this table that I have, for example, name, age, phone, I may have some constraints uh, over this uh, over over this uh, this data. Okay, and the relational model allows me to define some of those constraints. Okay, so that is basically what is a relational model, and the next question is why. Uh, why are we studying the relational model? What is significant about the relational model? Okay. So what is special about uh, relational model? So uh, one way to answer this question may be if we look at a historical perspective. Okay, so uh, what we had, we had, if we look at like the past, something around 1972 is when the relational model was introduced. And before this, we had other models. Uh, for example, we had 
network model. Uh, network was one model. Uh, hierarchical model. Uh, we had those models when relational model was introduced. And after relational model, we also had other models. For example, at some point we had the object-oriented model. And lately we had other models such as XML, uh, graph models, and more recently, uh, NoSQL models. Okay. So as you can see, relational model is not the only like uh, model that we have out there. I mean, there have been a number of models in the past, and we had more, more models lately. But the relational model, what happened was that it has survived. Like, I mean, that basically when it, it was introduced, it took over basically these other models. Commercial databases started using it. And these later models, something like object-oriented model, it kind of it didn't change much of the relational model. It didn't affect the market of the relational model. That, that's what happened with the relational model. So that's kind of a historical perspective. And maybe another reason that relational model has been around is simplicity. It is such a simple model. Compared to these other models that I have listed here, relational model is simple. Okay? And simplicity is power in this case. Uh, another reason perhaps could be Uh, it has a solid theoretical foundation. It is based on set, set theory, and uh, and that has that is uh, that provides basically a solid like base for uh, for the relational model, and it allows you to do things that otherwise it will be difficult. Okay. Uh, third. It's not too low level. Uh, it is basically, again, we will look at like, I mean, some models that are low level. So it's not too level. There is an abstraction happening. And at the same time, it's simple. And also, Uh, we have powerful query languages uh, defined over the relational model, okay? So that's maybe like another reason like why I'm in a kind of relational model, okay? Okay, so what are we going to do in this course? So what are we going to do with the relational model, okay? So, or what are the questions that uh, we want to study? Okay. So one of the questions is... How can we create relations? How can we query this thing? How we can how can we manipulate? Because that's what we want to do, basically. I have data. I have, for example, name, age, phone. I have make, model. I want to store this kind of information, uh, and I want to be able to query it. Okay. And the way we will do this is basically we will use SQL. This is something that you can check out. But we are going to also uh, discuss this in more details throughout the term. Okay, so that's one question that you want to study. Another question is maybe
Okay, so what type of constraints can we define over these relations or what is meaningful or what is reasonable? Uh, and to give you some examples, uh, at least here I have shown you two examples, uh, maybe a name, age, phone, and uh, can you list some constraints over, over this relation or uh, basically, yes, over this relation? And the third question is, uh, how can we build higher level abstractions? Uh, relation is an, abstraction, is an abstract term. Relational model is an, uh, is an abstract model, okay? And the question is, can we build something on top of, the, on top of relations, okay? Uh, so relation is a, is a simple concept. Can we build something on top of that? And the answer is yes, we can. So uh, maybe a better term is like, uh, how can we do that? And the way we want to do it is that we will discuss views. Uh, view is a kind of abstraction that we build on top of relations. Okay. And we will see that basically this has interesting implications. It allows us to do certain things uh, that otherwise it won't be possible. And it is one of the like, uh, uh, nice things, beautiful things that we can do with relations, okay?